always had a passion for strategy games of almost any kind. I've played them since I was young and enjoyed them immensely. I'm talking about genre greats like StarCraft 1, Warcraft 3, a lot of the Command and Conquer games, Civ 5, and so on and so forth. I first heard of Stellaris from one of my friends when he mentioned that he owned the game and that the game was on sale on Humble Bundle. It was over a year old at that point, but the deal was too good to pass up, and so me and two other friends of mine ended up buying it that day, installing it, and booting it up so we could try playing it. What followed were a few hilarious games. For the most part, no one had any idea what they were doing at all. And even when someone started to do well, someone would die or get conquered and we would have to all start over again. I don't think we ever even made it to mid-game one time when, when we were playing in a group of four like that. I only started getting more out of Stellaris when I transitioned to playing it by myself or with only one friend at a time. This helped me focus a lot more on the game instead of whatever ridiculous things were going on and what there was to actually learn. I ended up loving this game. Let's talk about the first thing, Solaris's greatest strength, which is its presentation. From organic hitting robots, to devouring hive minds, to ancient, powerful, mysterious civilizations, Solaris has many different gameplay styles and themes you can use to customize your empire, all usually common elements of science fiction. This is good, because for some people, including me, the idea of being able to play something like the Borg from Star Trek, or Zerg from Starcraft, or the Daleks from Doctor Who, is one of the best parts of the game. The graphics are some of the most beautiful in any of the game subgenres. They're not overly intense, but at the same time the level of detail for all the different kinds of space phenomena is outstanding. Black holes are huge, dark, devouring holes in space that sit at the center of their systems. They're almost hypnotizing to stare at, incredibly well animated, usually surrounded by debris or gas, and what I'd imagine one would look like if we had a better up close image of one. The stars come in so many different colors, but they keep to a realistic representation by having things like red dwarfs be common, just as they are in our own galaxy and universe. You'll see things like blue supergiants, yellow dwarfs, round dwarfs, and even things like pulsars and neutron stars and other beautiful stellar phenomena. Debris and asteroid fields and planets are visible too. You can see huge moons floating around large, mysterious worlds, gas giants, lifeless cold rocky planets like Pluto clinging to the edges of solar systems, and beautiful, lush garden worlds that are fortunate enough to be in the right range of habitability for life to flourish on them. Along with all the other realistic stellar phenomena, the game also does an incredible job of showing fictional space elements like alien construction and megastructures in space, traveling alien creatures, star fleets, and more. It really makes you feel like you're exploring a mysterious galaxy and that everything you're discovering is strange and unknown and that you've yet to encounter the greatest untold secrets. This is arguably Stellaris's greatest strength. Its visual presentation is really unchallenged. There might be a few games here that it looks somewhat as good, but to me, no sci-fi game I've ever seen has managed to match Stellaris on this front. And that's without mods that increase textures and make things look even prettier, like Real Space 3.0 or other mods. The game isn't beautiful just visually though. The soundtrack for this game is also amazing. It's full of powerfully sweeping orchestra music, as well as haunting, slow, drawn out melodies that really please the ear. You hear the sound of victory and triumph and pride and defeat and loss and hardship. Later on you might hear a longer, more mysterious track as you investigate some anomaly out in space. And then later on still, a different song entirely might come on that's more energetic and might be some kind of war theme or a more cheerful or upbeat song entirely. You hear a lot of different songs throughout the game and it almost kind of sounds like the music you'd hear from a movie like Apollo 13 or Interstellar. Some of them are as long as 8 to 10 minutes or more, and the game even has a built-in music player to start, stop, skip tracks, or move around as you like, which I really appreciate. The UI of the game, originally a little bit harder to get used to than it is now, has really improved in my opinion. Information is presented to you in an easy to understand way, and it's not too difficult, for the most part, to grasp what you need to do in order to accomplish whatever kind of goals you might have. The only time this falls short are for certain issues that aren't so clear cut like why your prop growth might be slowing down on a newly colonized planet if you're not aware of the modifier, for example. Overall, however, the UI does a pretty good job and only has a few minor flaws. The game's presentation is amazing. There's something else that has to be covered though, of course, the gameplay. With the presentation covered, how does the game actually play? Well, Stellaris is a hybrid of 4X, RTS, and Grand Strategy. You control the game from a massive top-down view, 
sort of peering over the majesty of the galaxy as you move your fleets around, construct research and mining stations, colonize planets, and grow with other species for territory, resources, or just because they happen to be of a different kind of being than you are, and you don't like that. Robots want to kill everybody, merge everybody together, or just take care of the cute organics. Hives want to eat everybody, and the fanatic purifiers just want everyone else besides themselves gone. The combat is mostly hands-off, though there's a ship designer you can use, and if you're smart and understand how to create your own ships, it gives you much more control over the way equal battles will play out if you do things like proper countering of the enemy's fleet, as well as the positioning of your own. The sheer amount of different civics and traits that you can pick is overall fairly varied, but I'd like to see a DLC or two in the future that increases this even more. It would add a lot to the game's lore and potential gameplay options or empire setups. In a game like Stellaris, one of the best ways to play the game is arguably with mods. The modding scene for a lot of games is very substantial, but Stellaris has some of the best mods I've ever seen in any game. There's so many I don't even know where to start or what to talk about in specific. There are mods for basically everything. There are mods to increase the amount of civics you can pick from to change the gameplay overall. There are graphical mods that make space look more realistic and add things like a detailed asteroid belt to certain systems, different kinds of planets and stars that aren't featured in the base game, nebulae, and just a more generally detailed and richer graphical representation of what the universe actually looks like. There are mods that add different and new mega structures to the game. Creations of science fiction, some of them, and some of them propose real life but still imagined science that can change your play style or options during a specific situation. You're offered a ton of choices because of the mods, so I really had to mention them here, as I believe the game is far better with them than without them. You're really missing out on a huge chunk of quality content if you decide not to use them for whatever reason. The choices you make from moment to moment during gameplay are a bit less important in the long run, besides things like picking important ascension perks or colonizing the right planets. It usually won't matter too much, besides min-maxing of course, whether you build that mineral district first or the agricultural one. Instead, what's so enjoyable about the game is simply the atmosphere and the stories the game tells you, all of the crazy things you find in the universe, and all of the different ideas of empires you can play. I will say one final thing about the gameplay before moving on. Notice how I said ideas of empires you can play. There are a few options that do noticeably change gameplay, but in my opinion it's not enough. I hope in the future they continue to add changes and keep adding different, even more radical ways to play the game. Add more choices, more civics, more government types, everything, anything. Keep expanding on what's there. The differences between playing a democratic empire and an imperial one feel too slim or hardly there at all. It's one of my big criticisms about the game, along with the performance of the title. Stars doesn't really have a traditional story like other games do. There's no true set path or story with characters, events, plot, etc. Instead what it has is a, more, a series of smaller events that create a unique sort of feel for every game about who the people, or aliens, or robots, or mushroom individuals you're playing are, what sort of things they believe in, how their first contact goes, the kind of crazy things that they discover among the stars, and so on. Essentially, it's a very cool way of showing the Star Empire's start and growth as they take their place in the galaxy among the other top dogs. There's all kinds of unique events, cool one-off series happenings, longer event chains with cool stories in them, insane planets and star systems with bizarre features, and all kinds of other things you'll run into. The biggest, most common way this is shown and added on to is with anomalies and projects that you find from surveying star systems. As you branch out from your starting system, you survey and explore the nearby stars, Checking out the planets, moons, asteroids, and really any relevant stellar bodies that belong to that star system. While you do so, you'll often encounter strange things that don't seem to fit or belong. These things are called anomalies, and they're where most of the game's narrative and story comes from. There are so many anomalies that it's honestly ridiculous. There's at least several hundred in the game, as well as a bunch of other projects and events, and these too can be extended and enhanced by using mods from the Steam Workshop. The mods add so much to the game that I can't stop talking about them. Even after I started writing up this script, I've discovered a bunch more cool mods that I'm using in some of my newer games with Stellaris. It really doesn't end. The modding community for this game is crazy. Bottom line about Stellaris is narrative and story. It's not exactly concrete and set in stone, but you can sort of shape it by the kind of empire you choose to play and the decisions you make in the game. It's fun and sometimes you end up with different outcomes, and overall I heavily enjoy it. I don't read all of the events and anomalies like I used to, as I've seen most of them by now, but once in a while I'll come across a really interesting, longer chain and be fascinated by the writing for a good 15 minutes or half an hour if it's an extended chain of events.
The game really doesn't suffer here too much. No one plays a 4X or Grand Strategy game for a sword anyway, for the most part. Unfortunately, this is where the majority of my criticism with Solaris will lie. I'm going to talk a bit about my experience with the game, the experience that a few people I know have, as well as the issues the overall community goes through and what you can expect to get if you purchase and play the game yourself. In the early game, when your population is under control and none of the empires in the game have started going massively huge, for the most part, the game runs fine. There's not much lag, the days play themselves out fast, and you can easily play the first 20 or 30 years if you pause minimally and just keep going. You can play them out in maybe an hour or two or even less. Once you start to approach mid-game though, this is where you're going to start noticing a problem. It gets so bad that the game starts to slow to an utter, complete crawl. The lag can be very terrible if you don't have a strong computer or if you're playing on a larger galaxy size. It'll go from multiple days in a month passing in a second to you being lucky to get one day to pass a second. The game slows to one third or one fourth the speed it was running at the start, easily, which is unacceptable. It's really discouraging to keep playing when this starts happening. It's part of the reason I restart games so much in Stolaris. In fact, it's actually hard to finish a game for me because of this. Other people, even ones with better rigs, have suffered a lot of the same things. There was a performance issue with how populations were calculating their job weights and a bunch of other things, and this was during the first few iterations of patch 2.2. Point is, you could have a good, expensive CPU from the i7 line, but you could still see a lot of performance issues. That's not only disappointing, it's honestly kind of embarrassing. So I had a tough time with the game when it came to this, and so did a lot of the community. One of the only people who hasn't really suffered much lag is a friend of mine I play with. He has a pretty strong rig, and overall he says that he doesn't suffer much lag, even on larger galaxy sizes later into the game, which is sort of hard to believe considering there's a lot of people with better computers that still have issues. When it comes to performance, you might slide by if you have an absolute god to your rig, but if you're in the middle of the line or rocking a potato PC, you're going to really struggle here. Overall, I really enjoy Stellaris. It's a wonderful title for the most part. The visuals are amazing, the sound is terrific, the gameplay is engaging and interesting, at least when it's fast, and the whole package comes together very well. The big issue for me, besides wanting more content, would be the performance. It's a shame, honestly. I'd like to finish more than just one or two games out of maybe 10 or 15 that I start, but it's very difficult since the game just becomes a slog after a few hours because of how slow it gets. So ours is a really cool 4x grand strategy RTS. It has a lot of fun factor if you can deal with some of the downsides. And I'd recommend checking it out if you can get it on a sale or you feel like you can deal with the things I described here. You can still have tons of fun with the game even if you don't finish matches. I have almost 500 hours in the game and overall I'm very satisfied. Thanks for watching.